Hey YouTube people, taking a look today at the Relatech P400 series M2 NVMe 2280 SSD. Now this model that they sent over to me is supposed to be a PCIe 4 4 lane, so that's kind of the, the maximum that you get pretty much uh, for your M2 slot. And it's a uh, one terabyte version and we're going to take a look at it, see what chips it uses, see what, uh, what kind of memory it has inside it, and of course we're going to judge the performance. I have an X570 board test bench right there that we're going to load this onto and do some performance. It is QLC, uh, so it's not TLC or MLC or SLC, it is uh, QLC, so we'll take a look at that, see if the performance drops off when we use it, but if not, this is pretty readily available on Amazon and might be a good low-cost solution to get some PCIe 4 speed, so let's take a look. So while I'm getting the test bench loaded up, I wanted to open this up and take a look, see if we can identify some of the memory and chips used in here. Okay, so as expected, this is a Fizon controller, uh, PS5016E1632. Now this is similar to, I mean, this chip is, is used on quite a few M2 SSDs, including uh, some of the Western Digitals, the SN750 I think uses this chip, and um, hard to say what, uh, what memory chips these are. Have to. I'll bring that close to the camera so you guys can take a look. But they're uh, SK Hynix. But the quality of the cells, like who who knows? So they got our DRAM and two 512 modules. I think is what those will be. So uh, we'll get it loaded up and put it through its paces. Okay, so we've got the drive installed and everything's looking good. We can see it's a brand new drive, uh, barely powered on. And we are PCIe 4 X4. And uh, we're on this firmware, EGFM 52.3. And that firmware is the same one that you might see on a Corsair MP600 core. So I would guess that this has very similar performance to that. Uh, it is rated at 5,000 read and 3,700 write. So we're going to see if it actually gets close to that. So let's go ahead and run the benchmarks and see what we get. Okay, and we finished up with uh, really quite respectable numbers, uh, 4714.64 uh, max read, uh, 2101 right, not quite up to the rated specification there on the right, but pretty close. Now, uh, I would compare this uh, roughly to the MP600 core just based on the the stats um, and it looks uh, pretty equivalent to that so uh, the last thing I'd like to do is just kind of uh, do some large file copies and see if this thing starts to slow down at all and we'll take it from there okay so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this uh, blu-ray to itself on the same drive and see how long that takes You can see it had a pretty fast initial speed, then came down to 1.1. Okay, 20 seconds the first time. Let's try it again. And it's already slowed down quite a bit there. It may have had some background things loading. 
but we'll we'll keep going just to okay 27 seconds keep going Also 27 seconds. Let's keep it going. You can tell it's maybe finishing the file in the background. Okay, now it's kind of running out of its spare area. You can see it fluctuating quite a bit. My guess is, yeah, we're going to go over the 27 seconds we've been seeing. Okay, 34 seconds. Do it again. These are the types of real world situations you might find yourself in. Okay, now we can see it's really started to slow down. It's probably exhausted all of its spare area and has to do some garbage collection out of the cache. I don't know if that's garbage collection, but it has to get that cache cleared out. So we're already way past what we were before. Forty four seconds. I really need to write a script for this. <laughs> Sorry, guys, but it's just a kind of a quick and dirty test of this uh, little drive here. But it's looking like the slowest read-write situation is it gets down into the, uh, you know, 170s. This will probably be our last run. It's not uncommon to see uh, these drives start to slow down like this when you hit them with heavy loads. Um, yeah, now we've really capped it out. So 120. My guess is it's 120s, as slow as this thing's going to go. The nice thing is it doesn't seem to freeze up. Yeah, sometimes they kind of sit there forever, but this tends to at least stay responsive, so that's always good to see. Okay, so that's our best case, worst case scenario in heavy loads. And uh, finger test. I'm touching that and it is actually quite hot. Also not uncommon, not unbearable. I mean I can touch it. Uh, it would burn if I held it on there for, <laughs> for a long time. Uh, it wouldn't be a bad idea to pop a heat sink on there or use it in a motherboard that actually has a heat sink built in. Um, but like I say, this is nothing out of the ordinary for an SSD like this. All right, so what's my take on the Relatech? Uh, well, it seems like it could be some uh, 
kind of repurposed uh, existing designs. I mean, Pison designs are kind of all the same anyways. Uh, this looks to be very similar to something like the MP600 uh, core series, one terabyte, and performs very similarly. And, um, well, it is a QLC drive, and you won't see sustained PCIe 4 performance. You wouldn't see that on any other uh, drive of this class. So if you are looking into something maybe will save you a few bucks but have some of the same performance I think this is a great pick uh, I would advise you since this is a PCIe 4 drive to use it on a motherboard that has built-in heat sinks or get your own heat sink and put it on there to maximize your performance so thanks for watching we'll see you next time